Hi, welcome to Today in Tokyo. This is Carl. Have you seen people with their masks like this? Have you wondered what the heck is going on in their heads? I've wondered. Have you figured it out? I can't figure it out. Do they not know that their nostrils are connected to their windpipe? That these two conduits here, these two tubes, <laughs> connect to uh, the esophagus um, and lead down into the lungs? Maybe they do know that, but I guess they don't realize that if you have a fork in the road, such as, you know, two tubes are, and like if my wrist is the bronchus, which leads down to the bronchial tubes which connect to the two lungs, and air pressure is being forced up through basically where my wrist is, the bronchus, right? And comes up past the throat and goes out the mouth, it's also going to go out the nose. Similarly, when you inhale through your mouth, you're taking air through the nose and it's going to go back down there. Um, this is because if you have a fork in a tube system and they're both connected to a vapor pressure or gas pressure, they're both going to experience the passage of the gas. Basically, what I'm saying is you can't breathe only through your mouth or only through your nose. It's physically impossible. So people doing this because they think they're only breathing through their mouths are breathing through their noses. And in public places during COVID, an airborne virus, they're endangering people. I find the whole COVID situation scary, not just because of the physics of the virus. And it is physics, right? It's physics you're fighting, right? The virus biology can't take effect if it doesn't find itself a part of the physics, the physics of air current, vapor pressure, gas pressure, right? The virus can't do anything to you without the physics. And so I find it scary that people don't understand physics, obviously. I mean, either that or they're wise asses and they're thinking, well, I'm only going to breathe through my mouth and people probably think that that matters. No. The only way that it matters is in the fact that it's endangering everybody. You have to have your nose and your mouth covered, period, end of subject, unequivocal. So the scary thing about the virus is not the virus itself, that's just nature, like volcanoes and earthquakes and vacuum and gravity and evolution and disease, the thing that's scary about the virus is we can see who the crazy people are. We can see who the sociopaths are. We can see who the ignorant people are. And where I live in Japan, where nobody will say anything to a stranger except me, you can see people who are endangering others and nobody will say anything to them. You have little old ladies sitting on the train, people who are hanging by a thread to survive this virus, and people sitting next to them in their 20s with their mask off. Right? And the things that go through your mind, even if you're a peace-loving humanist, mostly pacifist like me, are, that guy needs to get punched in the face. <laughs> right? But of course nobody punches him in the face, and I don't want anybody to punch him in the face. So sometimes, when I don't feel like it's too embarrassing to be the weird foreigner, I go up to that guy and I ask him to lift his mask, which makes me look like a weird foreigner in Japan, because people don't interfere with other people here. And so the other things that go through my mind are, is that person stupid? Is that person crazy? Is that person crazy and stupid? Is that person crazy, stupid and ignorant? Is that person just ignorant? Is that person just busy? I don't want to think about this stuff. I have my own things to think about. So in a place like Japan, where people are supposedly very concerned about others, they're obviously not thinking about others or they're not educated. Which brings me to my next point. If they are educated and they're doing this, then they don't care. So the whole idea goes out the window about people here caring about other people. Because if your mask isn't covering your nose, you're either stupid, ignorant, or don't care. Or all of the above. It's probably a combination of all of that. 
plus the pressures of life. But you don't get excused from that. Just like if you're speeding in a school zone, you get pulled over by the cop, you're getting a ticket. You can't claim ignorance. Nobody cares. Ignorance doesn't wash the dishes. So during an airborne pandemic, where the actual air is the enemy, because you don't know if it contains virus particles, especially on a train, or a plane, or in a bus, or a car, or in an elevator, or on an escalator, or on a crowded train platform, or in a plaza. You have to have your mask up, or you're the danger to everybody. And you can't say, well, I'm healthy. You don't know that. That's proof that you're ignorant too. I could pick up the virus in the next few minutes if somebody sits down and has it. And then I could give it to somebody else as the cultures of the virus, or rather the viral load or the particles are still in my throat or my nose. All of the anti-mask people who say, oh, the holes in the mask are too big to protect against the virus, then put two or three masks on. The probability is that the conglomeration of the different fibers will catch some of what's being breathed. Another thing is, we build up a moisture barrier inside the mask, right? So if you have molecules of water and other material together, they will have a greater likelihood of catching airborne viral particles in them. It's like throwing confetti at, at a plate full of glue. Okay, but if you have no mask on, everything is being expelled into the air. And now something about the air. The air is a conglomeration, a mixture of interlocking multivariant vortices. That means spirals of air current, air molecules and other materials, dust and gases, always everywhere. Like if you had a million hair dryers pointed in every direction. That force is being created by wind, breeze, the movement of people and objects, people's breath, vehicles, downward pressure in the atmosphere, and all of the weather that influences it. So we're basically in a medium like being underwater, okay? And so the airborne viral particles don't fall straight to the, gr to the ground after you exhale, exhale them, especially if they're aerosolized. They're going to stay on the air. Now, when you're in a bus or another enclosed place, like an elevator, or a train or a plane, especially in a car. Do not get into cars with other people who may have the virus and who are not vaxxed and who are not wearing masks. You're in a, an enclosed container and you have a much higher likelihood of inhaling the air that they exhale. In fact, it's inevitable, okay? But when you're on a plane, a train or a bus, there's an air conditioning system usually blowing down from the top. The body gives off what's called a heat plume the heat plumes can raise airborne particles. We're talking about infinitesimally small microscopic things. They will float on the air current the way a plane flies in the air, which mu with much greater ease. So the bodily heat plumes actually can raise the particles. The air conditioning pushes the particles down. The air and the heat plumes fight and the particles stay floating in the air from some scientific studies for up to 20 minutes. They can also travel as far as 60 feet. So when you're on a train, you have to imagine that you are in a soup of germs, even if the window's open, even if the air conditioning is on. It's moving everything around at a greater speed and probably equalizing the balance of what's in the air so that everybody's getting the same sample. So if a guy 200 feet away sneezes, coughs, breathes, laughs, or talks loudly, you're going to inhale some of what he exhaled. My next point, do you want to be carrying a personal fan in a situation like that? No, you don't. If you're thinking that the fan is giving you more fresh air, you're forgetting where you are. You're in a car with up to 200 other people breathing through their masks. And there are, as far as I've counted, usually between two and five people on a train in Japan like this or like this, and nobody says anything to them. So, the air they're breathing down there, inhaling and exhaling, you're going to be breathing in a matter of minutes, especially because the window's open and it's circulating those vortices at a greater speed, and because the air conditioning is on, and because you have 200 people whose bodies is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, raising what they breathe into the air. 
and you have a fan sucking that air to your face? That's insane. It's amazing to me that the Japanese government has not warned people that they shouldn't be walking around in crowds with personal fans. That's crazy. Yes, you want fresh air, but you don't want to increase the chances that you inhale what the next person exhaled by sucking it to you and the people behind you, by the way. So people, get vaccinated. Wear a mask. Cover your face and try to get masks with gaskets like this to cover up the spaces. A lot of people in Japan, for example, wear the mask flat. They don't compress it around their face, I guess because it looks fashionable that way. And so you have all these spaces. It's not doing anything in that case because air pressure makes it so that the air that you are in fills its container. If you remember your high school science, the property of a gas is that it fills its container completely. That's why if you're in a gymnasium and some idiot is on the other side smoking a cigarette, you smell the cigarette where you are. It's not that the wind blew the cigarette to your face, it's that the gas expands to fill its container. The major point to, and takeaway from all of this is, it's the physics which is killing people because the physics is the delivery system for the virus. Not magic, not stupidity, but stupidity is playing a big part. Mask up and be safe. Good luck.